is about building community and uh, why community is that what we call problems like education, health care, systems, crime are really the symptoms of the breakdown in community. So this is really a methodology about restoring community, helping people realize that their social fabric is what educates a child, it what keeps me healthy, a local economy, uh, what care for the elderly systems, we've delegated to systems the, that responsibility, so communities have to claim that back. The world is changed through invitation. An invitation means you can say no. Most of the culture in the world thinks it's changed through mandate, through policy, through requirements, through somebody at the top deciding what's good for us. And then you can decide whether to support that or take a stance. But a more powerful version is that the world is shifted through invitation. And a great invitation is one where you can say no to it, and something's required of you, so it has a hurdle, and it's organized around a possibility. The old conversation is that the schools raise the child, the doctors keep me healthy, police keep me safe. That takes us nowhere. So if I want a future South Africa, if I want to create something unique in this nation, or any nation, then citizens have to stop being consumers and reclaim for themselves the capacity to care for these children, to care for the elderly, to care for the people on the margin, to care for, and that's a community task. It takes a competent community to raise a child and to heal the wounded, and so this workshop is really about giving people the means to do that. And the workshop becomes an example of how that happens. So I don't have to think about it or wait for it. All I have to do is immerse myself today in the future that I have in mind. It's an opportunity to engage with a lot of different people, to get very different opinions. Um, and also the possibility of co-creating something with people that you you know, you've hardly met um, and you feel that relatedness with them, that connection and you actually can create something together. It's just really amazing. And so in some sense we're inventing together a methodology and a language to think about what creates coherence among us. The methodology is ridiculously simple. It's so simple I can even describe it. So all transformation is linguistic which means that if I have a new conversation, the world has changed in some way, but certain conversations are more powerful than others. Uh, conversations about opinions, about negotiation, about reports and studies, they're interesting, but they have no power. So you say, which of those conversations? Well, you can get really specific. You can say a conversation of possibility is more powerful than a conversation of problems. You can say a conversation of ownership is more powerful than a conversation of blame. A conversation of dissent is more useful than lip service. A conversation of commitment is more powerful than bargaining. A conversation of gifts is more powerful than deficiencies. Plus, I want to be with people in the room who chose to be there. So you say, how do we create a conversation of invitation rather than mandate and policy? So these six conversations create a framework, and then within them there's a set of questions that bring them into the world. Yes, I did experience community, because each and every one were encouraged to, to share on what is happening, where, they, where we come from, you see. And uh, whatever they share, they inspired me a lot. Every time I say I need better leadership, I'm never thinking about myself, I'm thinking about someone else. So how do you structure? a gathering, an engagement, a process, so that we say that the visionary leadership will occur among citizens.
basically you break people into small groups because a small group is where everybody's voice gets heard, where everybody makes contact, put them in a circle of four people, tell them to put their knees less than nine inches from their neighbor. This is very complicated technology. And the big thing is answer the questions and don't be helpful to each other because people being helpful to each other is just modern form of colonialism. So we, we admonish, harass, cajole small groups of people around uh, open-ended questions to ask each other, why does that matter to you? Rather than trying to be helpful. Oh, I felt that way once. I try, have you tried this? What are you gonna do about it? All of those helpful questions and statements are obstacles to an alternative future. I've created uh, probably six or seven relationships already and networked with two or three organizations already. An alternative future gets created uh, out of a possibility, not out of a problem-solving process. In South Africa, you have an amazing story, amazing culture in the process of remaking yourself. And, and the challenge is to create a, a future of your own creation. There are few countries in the world that have a public conversation about forgiveness. And so there's some kind of compassion, some kind of longing, some kind of relational capacity in this country that just isn't going to be found anyplace else in the world. The world needs to extract something other than suffering from Africa. And so this process of building connection, community, relatedness, possibility, ownership, a gifted-based country, this is what the world needs to learn from South Africa. And, uh, and you have the capacity to do that if you just shift the conversation.